This video is just going to pick up on lots of random bits and I'm going to have to apologise, the storm is raging outside, it's Christmas Eve 2015 and there's a little storm going on. As often happens, I'm on an island, storms happen all the time. So uh, this video is just picking up on random bits. It's a picking up on the LED head torch, I did a full discharge test on this and the bad news is it doesn't turn off automatically when the battery voltage gets too low, the, the lithium cell which is annoying. Certainly the intensity LEDs and the current draw goes down dramatically but um, if you have one of these make sure if you put it in a toolbox that it's not going to get the button pressed accidentally and if you're using it and it just starts getting too dim that's the time to turn it off and get it on a charger although I've said that. I checked the battery capacity after fully discharging it um, and I found that the capacity is 500 milliamp hour and given it's a, uh, it actually the LEDs draw at with fresh batteries, about with, with freshly charged cells, should I say, about 60 milliamps, you're going to get well over 10 hours because the current draw gradually goes down and the intensity gradually goes down over time with this. So you're going to get a good long 10, 12 hours out of this before it needs recharged. So it's still, for the cost, it's still a very good torch, particularly with the infrared uh, LED chopped out. Others are asking could an uh, ordinary white LED have been put in place of the infrared LED for more light? Not really, because the, uh, it's the LED, the infrared LED is modulated by the processor and it's probably just driven with a series of pulses, so it wouldn't necessarily have added that much light. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, the, the three white LEDs for most jobs, just working up close on something or a little bit of fill light when you're working in a panel are, are ideal. So, yep, it, 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 that's a slight downside, the fact it doesn't detect the flat lithium cell and could over-discharge it and damage it, but the upside is it's a great torch. So it's actually a pretty good head torch. Next thing, actually, you know, should I do this or should I do the two-way switching? Uh, actually, I'll do the two-way switching. Uh, no, I, I'm going to do this first. This is the guts of the RCD, GFCI, GFI, whatever you want to call it, the residual current device, ground fault circuit interrupter. The list of one I took to bits to actually show what the inside was. And I was kind of intrigued because I'd, once I'd done the video, I took it completely to bits. There's a surprise. And as suspected, it's based around a single chip, which is dedicated to the task. And it's made by Fairchild, and it's called an RV4145A. You'll find the data sheet for that online. And what's intriguing is that uh, someone else asked, they asked about um, how it detects, you know, neutral to earth faults. And I'd always thought the way it detected neutral to earth faults was because the return current, uh, if it's split between the neutral and the earth, then it's the, you know, part current flows through each. And that's how it detected it. In most instances, that probably is the situation. But this has one extra trick up its sleeve. This is a... Um, extra coil. Uh, I notice it's got two little toroidal uh, transformers in here, little coils. And one of them actually induces a slight um, AC magnetic, it's kind of AC coupled through a capacitor. Strangely it's aft done after the bridge rectifier. I'm not sure how that works, but it basically it deliberately couples ripple onto the wires that are passing through this. And if in, in a normal installation, neutral and earth are connected, or, or the point they're going to be at the cl reference closest is at the transformer. That's where they are bonded together, the transformer. Or sometimes they'll be bonded together where they come into the house. Because the earth is an alternative to the neutral, it's a safety circuit it's to provide a, a return path for the live. So they're coupled at one side of this unit, the RCD. But what happens if they actually bridge on the other side, then it creates basically a loop of wire passing through this and it couples the uh, the slight modulation from this transformer onto the sense transformer and that's what trips it. It's very clever. It's all in here. There's another thing in here that makes very interesting reading. This, uh, the little, these things when you press the button it latches and uh, to, th this is optimised. I thought this uh, capacitor here was part of the power supply circuitry. I'm not 100% sure it is. Uh, I think it's maybe just filtering. But um, what's interesting is that this chip is optimised for low current operation. It's got a 24K resistor and it's got a zener inside and it's just really designed for low current operation. And to trip the coil out, it just drives the coil directly from the mains by bridging out its bridge rectifier with a thyristor. And that basically it's, it's means that the little uh, 
solenoid that punches off the that switches the breaker off is only going to be op operational for as long as it takes to do that. If it didn't, it would just burn out. But um, what's interesting is the specification for the thyristor, because a lot of you guys were saying that you plugged UPSs in on uh, ground protected outputs and they were tripping the breaker. Um, and it turns out that. Uh, it says, where is it, where is it, where is it? <coughs> Silicon controlled rectifier, that's the little thyristor. It's the, this little component here that fires the uh, solenoid. It says the thyristor must have a high DVDT rating. That's the ability to withstand really high transients without accidentally turning on. To ensure that line noise generated by noisy appliances such as drill motor does not falsely trigger the thyristor. And that means that theoretically, if you do have the switch inverters, high frequency noise, lots of uh, electrical stuff going on with them, it's possible that they were falsely triggering this thyristor and making it cut the breaker out. So that's uh, worth noting. I'm not sure what you're going to do about that. I don't know if maybe some extra filtering external, you know, after the, uh, after the ground fault protected outlet, the RCD protected outlet, before it hits the server rack or whatever you've got the UPS in is going to actually help there. But, uh, this is, makes an interesting data, it's an interesting data sheet to read if you're, if you're into such things. Okay, now on to Jeff LaBelle's inquiry. Jeff was asking about the wiring of three-way light switches because he'd had a situation he was trying to fix it and uh, even, well, I was going to say even the best, even your average electrician struggles sometimes with two-way, three-way, four-way, five-way light switches, and it's really very simple. Now, when I was at college, I was taught this schematic for um, wiring the two-way switches. Two-way switches uh, typically have one common, and they have two ter terminals oop, marked L1 and L2. And when you click the switch, it switches between L1 and L2. So the way I was taught was you had two of those for two -way, standard two-way switching, common, L1, L2. Uh, you can also use these as one-way switches just by connecting it to either L1 or L2, depending on which way up you want the switch to operate, but I digress. So these switches do just offer a switch from common between L1 and L2. So if you have live coming in and going into the common there, and then you have two strappers going across between L1 and L2, like that, L1 to L1, L2 to L2, and then coming out the other common and going through the lamp to neutral, then no matter which way, each, each of these switches will then control the light on or off by switching between these two strapper wires. And I'll come back to the three-way switching afterwards because once you realize how it works, it's really, really easy and it'll be like, oh, little epiphany moment. So. The other approach, and I prefer this approach for wiring, is you've got your, uh, let's uh, move this out of the way in fact, let's move that over there to give me more room here. You've got your two-way uh, switches, L1, L2, and common, and L1, L2, common. And all you do with this other approach is connect common to common, L1 to L1, L2 to L2, I'll just draw those lines again, I went down at a funny angle and stopped my pen writing. Uh, and live comes in, it goes to one of the strappers, and then it comes back off the other strapper, and this means it can be both, the connections be at, can be at the one switch, so you can basically extend from an existing ordinary switch by just running a three-core cable to another one, you can extend and turn it into lots of multi-way switching. So uh, that comes off, goes through the lamp to neutral. And again, no matter which way these switches are, that will then uh, turn that light on or off. So to add in the uh, three-way or four-way switching, we're only interested in these strappers. We're not interested in the common wire here. If you're running the three-core through all the other switch boxes, you're just going to loop that wire through. Whichever it is, you're just going to actually use a bit of terminal block. We're only interested in these strappers, the L1, L1, L2, L2. Because a two -way, uh, an intermediate switch is a switch you add in the middle. And what it does is it takes those strappers that are coming in, and the terminology seems to vary. Some of them say 
L1, L1, and L2, L2, another say L1, L2, L3, L4, and it's just, oh, jeez, you know, I don't know if they've standardised or something, but you get some random switches of the weird configuration. But all they do is that in one position, they switch those strappers straight through like that. In the other position, they cross them over. And you can put as many of these switches anywhere along that line that you want. You could have a hotel lobby with 10 or 20 switches, 30 switches if you want, that switch the whole lighting circuit. Uh, because basically just along those strappers you can just put extra switches in anywhere. Um, so um, that's the principle of two, three, four, five, six way light switching. Very, very simple. So um, uh, worth playing about with and uh, getting familiar with. But uh, yep, that's a uh, that's the gist of it. So I think that pretty much wraps up. We've covered the torch, covered the RCD and its little fancy double coil. Yep, I think that will do for the moment.